Hi, my name is John Matthews. I'm an ecologist with Conservation International, and I'm also the director of Freshwater Climate Change there. And this is a presentation meant to describe a paper that is publishing in PLOS Biology in September of 2011. My co-authors are Bart Vickle and Sarah Freeman. Both of them are with WWF US. The title of the paper is Converging Currents in Climate Relevant Conservation, Water, Infrastructure, and Institutions. The basic point of the paper is to really try to communicate a new set of issues that we have identified uh, to the conservation science community. And there are three kind of key underlying assumptions that we make that represent a new landscape for conservation science. The first is that most of the human impacts from climate change are really experienced through the lens of water. Uh, some of the obvious representations of that are through droughts, floods, other extreme events, but also through changes in disease range and frequency, through agriculture, through energy production, um, and also through cities, urban development, uh, water supply and sanitation. And if we think about where biodiversity is on the planet, it's mostly in the developing world. And the developing world is actually entering a, a very significant period of history where uh, a lot of economic development is being expressed through infrastructure construction. Um, so in places like China, India, Brazil, uh, you see massive development in dams for hydropower, for irrigation, uh, sanitation, water supply, desalinization even in some regions. And in a sense, we see that, that infrastructure investment by groups like the World Bank or by governments or the private sector has also really turned towards water infrastructure. And if you put those two items together, you reach our third point, which is a kind of growing recognition in the water community that our approach to water management for over a century has actually been become deeply flawed. And that's a result of climate change, that we essentially have been designing infrastructure and water resource management plans for a single fixed future. And we now know that the past, which has been the basis for those plans, is no longer a very good resource, no longer a good basis for making long-term projections for what will happen in the future. So what does this actually look like uh, on the ground? Well, uh, if we look at the Colorado River Basin in southwestern North America, it spans uh, the U.S. and Mexico. And most of the water in that region is actually governed by a single piece of policy called the Colorado uh, River uh, Compact. And it was put together in 1922. Uh, in the top right-hand corner of the chart, you'll see a bright red bar. That's the uh, observed data that went in uh, before the compact was put together. So 30 years or so worth of, of observational data of the Colorado River. Unfortunately, uh, it was bad data. It's not that it was mismeasured, but if we look at the long-term historical trends based on tree ring data shown here in the rest of the graph, we actually see that uh, those were 30 of the wettest years in the last 1,200 years, that they were a bad way to set up a water allocation program. And if you follow that red line down, uh, since 1890, since the signing of the compact in 1922, you see that generally that the precipitation in the region has been declining. And it's been getting closer to historical norms towards the mean over the past 1,200 years. That's a big problem because we have uh, developed this region, the Colorado River Basin, with the assumption that those 30 years were more normal. So the past has proven to be a spectacularly bad vision of the future. And that is, in a sense, crystallized through types of water infrastructure, such as the Hoover Dam. For decades now, the, the water that the Hoover Dam retains has been declining in quantity. And at the moment, for the last 10 or 15 years, it's only been averaging around 10 to, uh, to 25 to maybe 30% of its intended capacity. 30% capacity is, uh, is quite low 
and it's designed to be able to supply water for the city of Las Vegas and also generate hydropower. So it's underperforming for a large region in terms of electricity, and it places a lot of pressure on the city of Las Vegas in particular to be very efficient with its electrical generation and also with its water usage. That's not a bad thing, but there are firm limits, especially if the supply of water continues to decline in the next 10 to 20 years. So what we see then is that uh, we assumed that our observations were a good estimate of what was going to happen in the future. That's turned out not to be true. The infrastructure no longer matches its climate. And uh, we have some long-term economic development problems of ourselves in this country. And if you look across much of the rest of the world, the methods that went into producing the Colorado River Compact, to designing the Hoover Dam, to operating the Colorado River Basin as a cohesive, coherent management unit, that's what we've exported to other parts of the world. And since we've been designing infrastructure for a single climate, in conservation, we've been doing some similar things too. Uh, and the reason that both of these actually have a very special problem is that they tend to last a long time. Infrastructure for water management or in conservation plans are designed to operate over a scale of decades, even centuries. And as a result, it, we are seeing emerging climate infrastructure mismatches that are very likely to make poor nations poor and accelerate the decline of species and ecosystems. The implications are really threefold. The first is that water infrastructure is probably the primary battleground for human climate adaptation. Second, that we have to think very carefully about how the infrastructure that we design and operate right now uh, is going to affect the kind of long-term investments on the part of poor nations, such as Nepal or Afghanistan or Botswana or Tanzania, um, how they, they actually are able to progress in a normal development pathway. Uh, and if we're not careful, then we actually could accelerate the decline of ecosystems, the natural resource base for these uh, economies and even uh, really permanently affect the livelihoods for the poor people there. The third point is that while there has been a gradual slow merger between the economic development community and uh, the conservation community in terms of a nonprofit and trying to work a little bit better together, that for conservation science in particular, we really have to be much more effective in how we reach out to the technical people involved in infrastructure development. We should be talking to the engineers, the development economists, the people that are, are really managing water resources and water infrastructure. And we really have to do that to make sure that our work in conservation remains relevant for the coming decades. Thanks very much for your time. I hope that you enjoy the paper and that you'll write with us with any questions. Thanks very much.